So the topic that I want to talk to you about is the need for mentors. The need, somebody say the need for mentors. I don't know if that gram, uh, grammarly, if it's correct or not, but it makes sense to me. So I hope, hope it does to you. Um, you know, as you see, uh, before I get into the message, you see that a lot of young people are, uh, the youth is coming up to be able to speak. We believe in raising a young generation. As they're going to take over, you know, the Wednesday service, we want them to, to practice, to speak more. And this is going to be their, their, their day that they're going to, uh, to impact a generation. So as you see, you know, as Elizabeth, as uh, Eric, as Zaki, as Pablo, as uh, the, young, the youth begins to come up here and to begin to speak, support them, pray for them. These are the people that are going to raise your kids. So as you pray for them, as you ask God to anoint them, you're also praying for your own future. Amen? So just believe that. Pray for them. Uh, right now, me and my wife, Sylvia, we decided to take on Sundays right now to be able to mentor them, to be with them, to support them, to raise them up. Because that's what our pastor did for us. You know, our pastor, you guys don't even know, you know, 15, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, you know, he invested to us. He carried us. He was there. He was, you know, uh, laughed with us, cried with us because of the things that we said on Sunday you know um he supported us and today we are who we are because of our pastor amen you know <laughs> the stuff that we've done Jesus have mercy we thank God for for uh, our, uh, the uh, life of our pastor amen and today we're here <laughs> so that's what I want to talk to you about uh the need for mentors in our lives believe in our youth pray for them and believe that God's going to take them to a place that we dream of amen church that they're going to take over schools they're going to raise a standard raise a banner they're going to make a difference in our city and in our country for the name of Jesus Christ amen let's put our hands together for Jesus one more time You know, mentorship goes for me long ways back <laughs> to the days in Africa. And, you know, I remember it now. And, um, you know, our pastor has a vision, you know, to, 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 um, to see what God is doing all over the world. Whatever it is, is Ukraine, Russia, China, Africa, you know, Nigeria, Cameroon, South Africa, whatever it is. And to be able to be a part of that. So he wants us to connect whatever, whatever what God is doing and to be able to bring it here. And our pastor, as, as he looks at the Bible, reads the Bible, he understands the power of mentor. He understands if you come under somebody that God is using mightily in healing, deliverance, prophecy, sooner or later, as you walk faithfully under them, God will begin to do the same thing in their midst. So, you know, about three years ago, some, I even know, two or three years ago, you know, uh, Pastor's like, oh, we need to go to this place, you know, the, the Senegal Church of All Nations. I'm like, you know, I was the young one. I'm like, yeah, you know me, I don't have wife, kids, or whatever, send me. And I remember as I went there, and we have agreed with Ily and Vlad. We're like, hey, you know what? They're like, you go for six months, and then we will go six months after you're done. I'm like, yes. You know, I'll test the waters. I, I'm, I can do that. It's no problem. <laughs> so I don't know who decided what. We recorded video here, you know. Hey, you know, we're going. We preach here. We're going to come and learn from you and stuff. So I'll get to Africa, and I'm like, man, I'm going to learn mentorship. Yeah. I'm going to be just like, you know, a prophet. And then time goes by I'm like dude this is hard it's not easy right rice you know humidity sweating like crazy I'm like man it's not easy I come to the office of problem like hey you know let me let me haul out my boys <laughs> see what they're doing over there in America <laughs> you know so I called them I remember they're like give me the phone because they felt sorry for me I was like even weeping I'm like just let me call them and I call I remember talking to to them and I'm like hey guys you know so you know when are you guys coming like oh no we're not even coming <laughs> You know, no, you know, just do it. I'm like, a little, like, my, my heart sunk, like, to the, I was on the second floor. I felt like to the first one. And um, I remember there, and, you know, that's when I came back. It took me, like, six months to be there. Rejection. <laughs> and, you know, and I understood from that point on that mentorship is not fun and games. It is, it is not something easy. If you want to go to the top, mentorship will cost you. If you believe that you will be mentored by someone, and it's going to be easy. They're going to pat you on the back. They're going to say, oh, good job. But everything that you do, you are totally wrong. And for somebody to become a successful person, for somebody to come in under a mentor and to become who God wants them to, to become, you have to go through thick, through thin. You have to go through weeping. You have to go through rejoicing. You have to get a PhD in good and the bad. You got to get a PhD in blackmail and hardship and rejoice in every area of your life. You will going to have to master that. 
You ask any great hero of faith and they'll tell you the mentorship comes with a price. Every single person in this place, you may say, you know what, uh, you know, I know everything. And right now we have this uh, epidemic going around, you know, uh, don't tell me what to do. Don't, I know it all. You know, and they go out and they begin to do mistakes that cost them so much. And the devil is so smart because he knows if you mess up in your earlies, you'll spend the rest of your life just recovering from it. So he knows if he can hit you strong enough in your youth, in your teen years, in your early 20s, if he can hit you strong enough because of lack to listening to parents, to mentor, to authority, you'll just spend the rest 30, 40, 50, 60 years recovering from mistakes that you made because not willing to obey your mentors. So we, we thank God for the life of our pastor because he knows one thing. Look at a place where God is using a mighty man, a prophet, an apostle. Go there, water his hand, learn from him, walk behind him, learn it. Because there will come a day where a double portion anointing will fall upon your life, upon a church, upon our home groups. And they'll begin to walk, prophesy, heal, begin to cast out demons because that is what God wants you to do. Jesus says, you know, he says, in the last days you will do greater things. Why? He understood that if you walk under your authority, you will also walk with authority. Amen, church? So there's quite a few scriptures that, that I have when it comes to mentorship. I just want to read a few of them. First Peter, uh, First Peter 2, 17, 18 says, respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. You who are slaves must submit submit to your masters with all respect do what they tell you not only if they are kind and reasonable but even if they are cruel second timothy 2 2 says the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also proverbs 27 17 says iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, even when he's old, he will not depart from it. So we see Bible talks about mentorship, talks about, you know, being under somebody who can train you that later on when God wants to use you, that you'll not just depend on luck or you're not just depend on, oh, hopefully life will just be nice to me. No, you will have the character of God to sustain the position that God has for your life. Many people who are sitting here will become doctors, will become NBA players, soccer players. They'll become, you know, millionaires. They'll become business owners. They'll become, you know, uh, maybe mothers that will raise great children. But that takes character. And how is character developed under somebody, some mentor, some anointed man of God? Maybe it's under your parents. Maybe it's under your pastor. Maybe it's under your leader, your home group leader that God has put you in, not by accident, but for a purpose. That when the time comes, you're ready to maintain the position that God has for your life. Amen, church? Ask your neighbor, who's your, who's your mentor? Turn to your other neighbors. Ask him, who mentors you? There's, there's actually, I want, I want you to, there's top mentor relationships that I want you guys to see. This is actually very, very interesting. If you can pull up the first one, top mentor relationships. So top mentor relationship, Oprah Winfrey was mentored by a uh, celebrated author and poet, the late Maya Angelou. That one. <laughs> Angelo, come on now. Former Apple CEO uh, and the late Steve Jobs serve as a mentor to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant was mentored, this is, this is actually pretty interesting, Kobe Bryant was actually mentored by Michael Jordan and Michael Jackson. A lot of you guys didn't know that. Let's go uh, to the next slide. Former uh, Morehouse College President Dr. Benjamin Mays was an outspoken critic of uh, segregation before the rise of the modern civil rights movement and a mentor to Dr. Martin uh, Luther King Jr. The first woman to co-author CBS Evening News and the second woman to anchor one of the most America major network newscasts, Connie Chung, was a mentor to Fox News reporter Kyung B. Young. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you guys out here. Barcelona superstar Leo Messi, if you guys know, for, uh, was mentored by Ronaldinho. I can go next slide. Former Super Bowl champion uh, Daryl Green was mentored by his middle school football coach. 
astronaut and former U.S. Uh, Senator John Glenn was mentored by his high school civics teacher. Mother Teresa committed to a life of helping others and was recognized as one of the most admirable people of the 20th century. She led a remarkable and re, uh, revered life, but many may not have achieved all that she did if it weren't for her mentor, Father Michael Van Der Peets. And I think there's one more. Bill Russell played center of Boston Celtics from 1956 to 1969. His mother was his greatest mentor. Then fashion designer Christian Dior mentored his fellow designer, that one, I don't know that. How do you, how do you pronounce that? Young Vess Laurent. Warren Buffett is often considered the most successful investor of the 20th century. He mentored Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. Musician Ray, Ray Charles mentored music industry legend Quincy Jones. So if you see these statistics, you'll be able to see that people who become great don't become great by mistake or by luck. Somebody comes into their life and begins to shape and begins to form, begins to say, hey, you can't do this. Hey, don't do that. Hey, you better cut off this. Hey, don't do this. Hey, good job on that. Continue doing it. There was a mentor, somebody who spoke to them and said, you know what? This is what you need to change in order for you to maintain the position that God has for you. It could be in any area. You don't have to say that, oh, if I'm going to come to church, I'm going to have to become a pastor because Pastor Vlad is mentoring me. No, we're talking about character. We're talking about things of your character, something that God wants you to work on. It's, you know, you, 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 you know, getting angry easy, you know, you know, trying to rush all the time, you know, not being patient, not being loving. You know, these things, the skills that God needs for you to become an influential person in the community for Jesus Christ. Who is your mentor this morning, this evening? Uh, first point I want you to, to write down is this, that you don't choose if you get mentored. You only choose who mentors you. You don't choose if you get mentored. You only choose who mentors you. You will either be mentored by success or by failure. There's only two options. You don't choose, oh, you know, I'm not mentored by anybody. You know, I do, I tell my own life. No, you actually is being mentored by something or by someone. You just only choose if it's success or if it's failure. That's the only thing that, that, that you, you choose. Success if you begin to say, you know, I, I want to be, you know, success um, mentors me. You know, oh, I'm being successful in all these books. No, success is painful. Success is not fun. If you're being mentored by, by success, by maybe, maybe your home group leader, maybe your parents, or maybe somebody, it's, it's, they tell you to do the things which you don't like. You know, it's, it's one of those things that it's not fun. You know, for me, you know, it's Pastor Vlad, it's Ilya, it's my, it's my dad. You know, there's, you know, audiobooks, different pastors, you know, it was, back then it was Prophet and all these people. And when they begin to come to me and they didn't tell me, oh, good job. No, they say, hey, cut this off or this thing will destroy you later on. Hey, that relationship, you better cut it off. It, it, it's, it's poisonous. Hey, that habit, cut it off. You know, lately they've been coming work, uh, late to work and they were like, hey, stop coming. To, uh, you know, and I'm trying to play it off with the joke and inside I'm like, ah, you also come late the other day taking coffee. I know you. I know you. You know, it's like, and, and, and inside of you comes up, but, but at the same time, I'm like, if I want to be better, if I want to have the character that God has for me to maintain the position, whatever it may be, I need to submit to my mentors. I need to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'll, I'll not admit it, but deep down inside, you know what? I'll become better. I'll become stronger because I know there's going to become a time where God's going to require a, my character to hold the position that God has for my life. You see Joseph, Joseph begins to be, to be betrayed, begins to be sold into slavery. But at all times, there was somebody over him and he was faithful. He was committed. When people looked at him, he saw that God is with him. Why? He was willing to submit himself. It, it was, they weren't Christians. They were heathens. They didn't know God. He walked with God. He had dreams. He had all these things. So he could have said, no, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. But God shaped this character under heathen rulers in, praise, in, in, in slavery, in prison. Until the throne came, his character was ready to maintain a blessing. How many, how many times God wants to give the blessing to people, but the character is not enough to destroy. And God knows, if I give you that blessing, it would only destroy you and not build you up. 
How many people begin to run away from mentors, run away from church? Church is a place of mentorship. As you're here, you're being mentored by, by the word of God. As you're here, you know, you've been mentored by your home group leaders. And they begin to avoid that. And then we know like, oh, success, come my way. And, and it doesn't come your way. It actually runs away. And it just keeps going. So it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's like, you know, you, you text them, you're like, hey, bro, you know, let, let's, you know, let's step up in that game. Oh, my phone is broken. And then I'm always like this thing, I'm like, hey, wife, text them. Like, hey, come over for some movie. Oh, come on right over. You know, it's like, really? They begin to go from hard. They begin to try to bounce mentors, bounce the people that God has sent their way to avoid correction, to avoid mentorship so they could have an easy life. Well, let me tell you something. Easy life never leads to success. That is, that is just plain truth. Easy life never lets somebody to the throne. The road to the throne is full of, it's, it's, it's full of scorpions and snakes. It's thorns, it's thistle, it's, it's hard. But those who make it will enjoy the reward that it brings. Amen, church? Your home group. I want to really stress the importance on your home groups. We, we in the church, we're privileged as you're coming to, to a large congregation, you also can become a part of a small group that can speak life into you, that can pray for you. If there's a weakness in your life that it can build you. There's, you know, not the home group that you attend. They, those people have to be a, your mentor. It could be somebody else outside that, but you must attend a home group because that is where you're shaped. That is where you're built. That is where God speaks his word into your spirit and you begin to grow. But if you begin to avoid these things and you just come to church once a week and expect God's blessing where it doesn't go it doesn't work like that whom God loves he prunes whom God loves he chastises and I'm not trying to you know say the life will be hard I'm just saying there's a great reward coming but you need to prepare you need to prepare there's a reason why a church went through such a time of you know criticism of a blackmail people saying different things because God knew there's a time where God's going to pour out his blessing but he needs the people who will be able to maintain the blessing have enough character to sustain what God's going to pour out for the youth you know as the youth begins to rise up right now there's some young people like you know I want to do my own thing well let me tell you something a lot of people at your age paid a price of saying I do what I want until this day can't recover from the mistake that they made in early you need to pay a price in order to receive a mentor who is your mentor it's not that somebody that always pats you on the back that, that, that you know, that, uh, oh, good job, you know, hey, don't worry, it's not going to be. No, that one that gets up in your face says, five in the morning, I want to see your morning prayer. Hey, Sunday, I want to see your home groups. Hey, there's volunteering. You got to get involved. Stop being lazy. You've been coming to church for a year now. Get involved in church. Start volunteering. There's many things to do. They get up in your face and they begin to tell you the things that you don't like. That's how we grow. Number two. Obedience to your mentor is more important than sacrifice. Before David goes, before David goes and fights Goliath, he begins to come to, to Saul and begins to ask him for permission to go fight him. David proved his life under authority. Imagine when, when a prophet comes to your house and says, call all your kids to a party. I'm going to anoint the next king in your house. This is, this is a celebration. A prophet of Israel comes to your house and says to your dad, call all the kids to the house. We're going to party. God's going to anoint somebody. And David does not get called because he was appointed to shepherd the sheep. He was obedient. There was an instruction given. David, you need, to, you need to stick with the sheep while we go enjoy. And David said, you know what? I'm going to obey whoever God put over me. It was his parents. David goes, so you know, you don't even know. God is with me. I slay lions here. Bears fall on my feet. You're telling me to, to stick with the sheep. The prophet is coming. No. He obeyed the instruction of his dad when it could have even cost him the next potential king. But God saw the obedience. And God says, no, the king, the king is not in the house. He's somewhere else. God begins to search him out. God begins to find him at that place. I'm telling you, God has sent, you know, some people like, oh, my parents are this, my parents are that. No, God has put you in that family for a reason to build and to shape your character because there comes a time where God says, I have the blessings for you, but you need to have character enough to maintain to what's about to come. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We, have, we, we see even the greatest example, Jesus Christ. He begins before he starts his whole ministry. He becomes under the obedience, under mentorship, under the authority of his parents. I mean, 
If anybody on earth needed an excuse, that would have been Jesus Christ. Yet, for 30 years of his life, he was under submission and under the authority of his parents. Your parents could be your authority, could be your, your home group leader, could be your pastor. When they begin to speak into your life, it is the same time where Holy Spirit is speaking to your life. And he wants to prepare you for the blessings to come. I'm not trying to say that, look, you need to suffer. I'm saying God wants to bless you. That's what I'm trying to say. God wants to bless you. But for the blessing to take place, you need the character to maintain. Every high place is a slippery place. Every high place is a slippery place. So you need to have the character enough to sustain what God is about to give you. The fame, the greed, the fear, the emotions do not rule you out when God brings the blessing into your life. Amen, church? Sometimes, you know, I, I, come, I come in contact with some people, you know, some new people come to our church and, you know, I love helping out people, you know. They come like, hey, what is something I can help you with? Some people are like, yeah, I need a life. Some people are like, yeah, I need money, this and that, you know. So I begin to, you know, genuinely trying to help these people out. And then it comes to a point where I'm like, trying to help them out, trying to help them out. At the end of the day, it's like I want them to succeed more than they want to succeed themselves. It's like, what is wrong with this picture? I want you to succeed, and you know you want to succeed. Like, hey, man, I want to help you to, to, to do this, to accomplish this. Yeah, maybe next week. Okay. But you know what? Life will teach you a lesson. If you don't want to obey the mentors, life itself does the job to teach you a lesson. And Rocky Balboa did the speech. When life hits, he'll take your face and he'll stick it to, to the mud, and you know, you know the rest, how it goes. He already did the speech. I don't need to tell you again what life will do. But we have the opportunity in, in this place to be mentored by home group leaders but 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 in the, in the area of yogi bear in the area of camera crew of ushering to become to a part of a church or maybe even parking lot whatever it is god can use any foolish thing to shape your character so that when blessing comes you're able to maintain amen church a lot of people they you know they they turn spiritual and i've heard this many times and they said you know what these people are sinners holy spirit is the only thing that mentors me Jesus mentors me. And I'm like, you know, that's cool. I'm like, how can you be mentored by something that you don't see, which should be much harder for you, but something you see, it's hard for you to obey. Like, how does that make sense? They're, they're, they can't listen to, to earthly obedience, and they're willing to, to say, you know, I'm, I'm being obedient to spiritual obedience. It's like, how does that work? You first need to, to be obedient to your parents. You need to be obedient to your pastors, to your leaders, to your boss. In your work job, whatever it is, God has put you there for a reason. So you, as you begin to elevate, Joseph was put in a house where they betrayed him. If, if you think that's bad, well, I mean, we live in America, you can sue all you want. But, you know, Joseph had it bad, but yet God used that betrayal to prepare for his throne. You might be thinking, oh, I'm going to quit this job. Every job I get, they're always after me. No, maybe God is wanting to build your character and you're always running away from it. Holy Spirit begins to choose certain events and certain things in your life. He wants to say, you know, I want to work on that thing. Even though it does not make sense to you, but I, I want to build your character. I want to build your character. This morning, God was building my character. They towed my car. Jesus, have mercy. 250 bucks. I park. I come from morning prayer. Park my car there. Tons of cars there. I walk out. Whole parking lot is gone. I'm like, wow. Jesus came. <laughs> I was, I was. I was angered and so I was boiling. My wife, you know, my wife sits beside me. She's like, honey, you know, they're darn fair. And deep inside, I'm like boiling. I'm like, God, don't let me say anything I don't want. You know, and, you know, she's calming me down. And I'm like, and God's just building. There's certain things that, and I know I have, you know, sometimes I want to say things. But, you know, that day, today, I wore straight out of church shirt. And I'm like, dang it. I can't say anything bad. <laughs> so when I was there, I was like this. You guys are, and walked away. I'm like. Swiping the card fast, <laughs> you know, so God chooses foolish things in this world to begin to mentor you, to begin to shape your character. God knows there's a time that is coming where it's going to be so hard. And when you have that character, when you have that soil, because a, 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 time, a, tri a time of trial is a soil where a man of faith flourishes. It's, it's for you when, when the hard times come, it's a soil for you that the man of faith begins to flourish. Begins to force, become better than you were yesterday. And that is who God wants us to be. Amen, church? Number three, Holy Spirit, the best mentor. Holy Spirit, the best mentor. Yeah, write this down. This is very important. Your relationship with your mentors affects your relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
your relationship with your mentors affects your relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you can't be obedient to your mentors, you will not be obedient to the Holy Spirit. If you could not submit yourself to authority, you will not submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit begins to use authority. They might be good. They might be even cruel. Holy Spirit still can use them to shape you. That's, that's, that's what God did in David's life. God begins to use Saul. He begins to persecute and begins to, to do foolish things to his life. And you look at the life of David and you're like, this is cruel. This is not fair. Yet David said, I will never raise my hand against the anointed one. He knew the power of mentorship, even if it's a cruel one. Even if it's a cruel place. Some people begin to, you know, they, uh, I've met some people, they, they, come from, they, they come from other churches, you know, they say, oh, that church, you know, oh, they're like this or this. And the one thing I know, if they're talking about that church, sooner or later they'll say the same thing about the church. It'll just keep going and going where God's like, there's, a, there's something that I want to I fix in you. Maybe that pride issue. Maybe that's, that, 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 you know, you're being stubborn or maybe your, your character, your, your, your fears or your emotions or your greed. God's like, I want to fix that. But every time I come to you and I want to help you, you keep running away because either somebody's cruel or they're unfair or this is how they're treating you. Yet I want to prepare you for your throne. Yeah, I want to prepare you for your throne. You know, when I lived in Africa, I'm telling you, a lot of unfair things were done to me. <laughs> I look back and I thank God for every single one of them. I literally look back and I just thank God. I'm like, God, I see where, where my character was shifted in that place. And it was unfair. I look, I look at certain things that happen, take place now. It's like, God, those things were unfair. But I look back and I'm like, God, now I'm at a place where I only dreamed of. Because you took me through that place. In order for you to enjoy blessing, you have to get a PhD in criticism. In blackmail. In, in unfair treatment. PhD of, oh, they lied against me. PhD in, oh, they backstabbed me. Oh, PhD in, oh, they talked bad at me. You have to conquer that place that when you sit at a throne God can look and you say God this is this a man after my heart because even in the wilderness he chased after me even when it did not make sense he said God I'm going to use this foolish thing I'm going to turn it for my good Holy Spirit wants to mentor us he wants to work he wants to take you to a place of your glory of your throne but you have to choose to mentor the the parents that God has put you in God is using them to shape you for the destiny he has for you how many doctors, how many, how many professional basketball players, soccer players, musicians, people who will make history are sitting here tonight. But they're in a place of decision. Do I submit to authority, to mentorship or I run away from it? Do I submit myself or do I run away from it? The Holy Spirit is knocking. The Holy Spirit is like, I want to take you to a place where, where I begin to guide you. Where I begin to whisper to you. I begin to, to, to you say, you know what, this, this person, pray for him. And God begins to move. I want to take you to a place where, where you're, you're, in the, you're uh, at, a, at a lunch or whatever. And God begins to give you a word of knowledge. You begin to prophesy. But God's like, if you can't obey the people I put over you, how can you listen to me with something that is there's so much more harder to do? How can you do that? And I, I believe as, as our pastor has a vision of, you know, sending us to a place of mentors, of, of people who have, who have great influence, where God is using them mightily to give us a point that, look, chase after mentorship, even though it costs you everything. Hold on to what is right, because one day God will prove himself faithful. You know, even some of the men of God that we follow today, Prophet Shepherd Bashir, his mentor, even claims that this even Sunday service, his, his, his mentor, Prophet Angel, was there. You know, Apostle John Chi that came here, his mentor, Prophet T.B. Josh, he was obedient to every little thing. You know, uh, you know, if you look at uh, a pastor, Vladimir, you know, his mentor is, is, is our pastor, Vasily. He listens to every, after every sermon, after every service, he begins to be mentored, begins to, sometimes it's like, we don't like, sometimes, hey, you don't do this thing, you know, it's like, it's so hard to listen to. But we know one thing, to come to a place of the throne, you have to go through a place of chastisement come to come to a place where it's not easy but it's God you make all things work together for good for those who serve him come on let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ <laughs> sacrifice moves people but Holy Spirit is moved by obedience sacrifice moves people but Holy Spirit is moved by obedience the Holy Spirit wants to have the, such a close relationship with us 
to be able to to talk to us to be able to lead us to a place where he begins to use us to begins to give you dreams ideas holy spirit is longing for that for that relationship with you he wants to know you it's it's not that you are like hey holy spirit no he wants it more than you want it he wants to walk with you he wants to give you revelation he wants to prepare you maybe he wants to talk with you and just begins to fellowship with you he's your companion he's your friend he's your partner in life but yet the obedience first flows flows from your mentors from your parents and from from your authority yes a lot of unfair things gets done to us a lot and but the holy spirit is like i use those things I remember one time i did a i did a black song here <laughs> my desire by kirk franklin i don't know i got inspired i'm just like man and my team was like my team was very young so whatever i say they do you know now it's like if i say it's a bad song they, they don't like no uh, martin you're by yourself that one like all the teenagers there i'm like guys we're doing kirk franklin's song my desire everybody's like uh -uh. you know it's hard. i'm like you guys listen i'll kick you out you know you have no other life to live and uh everybody was like don't do that song it's bad I'm like no i got him piano and like my design. and i even started pronouncing some of the words the way you know kirk franken does black and after that you know vladimir everybody came out to me like don't ever do that song I'm like okay sometimes i do these you know songs up here and i i, I say that and then the next day pastor's like you know don't you ever do that song he sounded like a like a, a chicken just been run over someone that he's screaming and during that time i'm like i was so passionate my heart was there and you just took it and at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? We'll get better. We'll become the worship team that during worship, people will be delivered. People will be healed. People will be cast out. Things will happen. They'll come to a place where, where during worship, guys, you'll see that during worship, that there'll be such a thick presence that they don't even wait for the message. Miracles begin to take place at that. Why? Because there was obedience to a mentor. There was obedience to authority that say, you know what? Whatever you say, because I believe God, Spirit of God is upon you. He's speaking through you right now. I'm not going to run away from challenges. I'm not going to back down whenever it's going to get hard. I'm going to stick forward because there's a crown that lays for me. Crown of glory. There's a time where it's going to come where people begin to, you know, applaud. Oh, how did you get to that place? Obedience. 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 Ask your neighbor, who's your mentor?